Hey guys, this is Adrian, also known as the Tattoo Girl, who sometimes uses Sovitz SVC to record vocals in real time. Today I'm here for a little discussion and a lot of demonstration to show you the easiest vocal AI yet. The one I'm actually using right now to talk to you is a model of my own voice because I didn't feel like getting out the fancy microphone to record this video. So, if you're tired of struggling with Python and Colab and the lousy selection of sites out there that you're almost ready to pay a subscription to suit your vocal AI needs, stop what you're doing because you're in the right place. I've been where you are, and before I dive into today's talk, I want to say that I respond to all my YouTube comments. So if you're stumped on anything we talk about, just take a second to pause the video and ask me a question. I'm always happy to help out, even if it's not totally related to what I do or my idea of a good time. I'll also stop to drop some timestamps so you can skip around just in case you're bored. A little about me and how I got into vocal AIs, I'm a singer, songwriter, bedroom producer, and audio engineer who recently got into working with AI models. You can check that out on the rest of my channel. But I've been working with music and sound design since 2006 and I'm obsessed with tattoo, so much that I joined the military to learn their language. What drew me to AI is a long story, but to keep it short, my favorite vocalist of all time, Yulia Volkova, lost her voice to cancer when surgery left the nerves to half of her vocal cords damaged. She was barely able to talk, much less sing anymore, and at the time, computer voices were almost, they are more fantasy than reality. There was Vocaloid, but the lack of human expression meant that virtual anime girls like Miku and Luka were an acquired taste that some people even hated. And it was only recently that computers became powerful enough to do more, like deepfakes. Before that, clips like Obama running an ice cream truck with Trump and Biden like we have today would be done through mixing different speech clips, and it might take hours or days to complete. Singing was done through that painstaking process, plus autotune. Then it became text-to-speech and autotune, and suddenly voice conversion as we know it today. It was still really hard to make on your own, but it was a revolution. An unfortunately high dollar gate kept supercomputing revolution, as companies set out to make money off of just how hard it was to get these models running and how badly people wanted it, when the code was completely free on GitHub. If you don't believe me, just look at how even Colab is going with the paid subscriptions and the disconnections. My first thought when I saw this was, if we can swap acapellas no problem now, we can do a lot more. Alternate language covers, originals, acapellas that never existed, revived bands that no longer exist, singers who lost everything or died, singers like Yulia who are still alive. Today, Cancer might have taken her career down a few pegs, but she's still performing and writing new songs. I thought, if I can just make enough noise, someone out there with a supercomputer could bring her voice back. So, I asked around and I annoyed some people, but it wasn't enough. I realized after a few months, if I'm gonna get this idea across, I'm gonna have to do it myself. So, that's how I started my journey. And it was hard. I didn't know how or what or where to get started. All the programs I saw were in Python or Colab, took up too much space, took a 200 IQ I didn't have to understand how to code, or shut down halfway through and lost my progress like Colab. So I wasted weeks of my time all while Google fed all my data and I tried other sites that only offered a few text-to-speech conversions on low-quality models that they wanted to charge me $25 a month to use or create new ones. Eventually, I settled on Sovitz SVC off of GitHub, which I got working thanks to Petro's amazing tutorials. Huge shout out to Petro, by the way, that's p 3 t R-O, P3TRO Petro, definitely hit up his channel. With his help, it was still hard. It took two days to get the samples, a day to cut and process them, three days to set up, two more to train a model, and over 50 gigabytes of data on my PC, and I still had issues how to save my progress or train new models. If you tried this yourself, with or without help, I'm sure it sounds familiar, give or take, really screwing it up a few times and doing a fresh install. So, how do you get around all that? There are lots of great tutorials for methods I use involving DIY installs in Python, processing samples, training, and finally converting your vocals, but today I'm going to show you where to find the fastest, most idiot-proof vocal AI program ever with none of that. I say again, no Python, no Colab, a complete library of voices you can download and use for free. It's so easy a caveman like me could do it. It works right out of the box, it doesn't take up too much space, and it only needs a little head scratching to get everything to work just how you want it. I'm talking about Replay. BT Dub, special thanks to JK Pop, aka J Pop Muse, aka J Pop Karaoke on Waits.gg for putting me on this app and making a fantastic model off of my studio quality data set for Yulia. So, what is Replay? Replay is a free RBC vocal AI application. It works as a model library, stem converter, local RBC vocal AI synthesizer and converter, and a one-stop shop that works perfectly to manage, track, and share your creations. It enables you to convert locally or online. The only drawback is it can't create models, but they're constantly updating and it's so easy. I'm actually using it right now, just in case you forgot. Actual recording on my laptop, just so you can see what's going on here. That's right, this is a recording of my voice on a laptop microphone, run through a model of recordings from my studio mic from songs that I've done myself. Super useful if you're creating on the go, you're lazy like me, or your microphone just sucks and you want to write music anyway. You can even change the pitch so you can turn female vocals into male, and so on. If you don't believe me, look, I'll change it to, let's do, um, Vegeta. 
How about that? Replay has its own Discord and library of models like this one you can use right out of the box from Waste.gg. It's so simple, it's exactly what I wish I had when I started out making covers. Now, I don't know how much longer I can take listening to myself like this, so let's try Yulia herself, the voice that started it all. And here's how she sounds. And by the way, I get to OVG the embrace behind that just to get the full effect, but you get the drift, it works. Now, what you run the installer and choose your location, all you have to do is record the vocal in Audacity or select the file you want to convert, drop it into replay, trim, select settings for instrumental or stem conversion, select AI model, and create song. That's what I've been doing for this full video. A couple of minutes later and you have an acapella. You can share it if you want to run the same recording through another voice model or delete it and try again. It doesn't take a rocket science and the results are as perfect as your models allow them to be. Example A, I'll say it again. The results are as perfect as your models allow them to be. The results are as perfect as your models allow them to be. Quality meters so check out weights and listen to the samples before you blame the software. So how do you get it? First, go to tryreplay.io. The site looks a little janky, but you can click here to download replay. If you're not on Windows, click the button for other platforms. Follow all the instructions on the installer and choose a location that suits you. The setup is so easy, I don't even need to go over it here. All you need to do is run the installer, open up the application, and let it download 5 to 8 gigabytes of initial files. If you don't do this, it won't work, so be patient and take your time. If it gets stuck on a download for any particular reason, you can select Restart Server, and that should fix it, or just close it and reopen it. Eventually, the error will go away. The first model it'll give you is probably Kanye. You can safely delete him if you want as soon as the setup is done. After all the required files are installed, you're ready to go grab the models you actually want, whether it's something you made or one you got from Waste.gg. If you're getting these online, I recommend storing backups on another disk like a USB, SD card, or another drive on your computer. Unzip them there, rename the model.path to the speaker, and drag and drop into replay where the import model button sits. If you don't rename your models, they will import as untitled and that creates problems. Trying to import another model will give you the error that the PTH file already exists. So pay attention to this because I spent the first day or so getting this error not knowing what was wrong until I took another model I made off of Colab and imported it. To my surprise, the custom name given in Colab and the epoch saved as the file name which popped up in Replay and that's how I discovered I didn't have to install a model, delete it, and restart the server to switch models. This is probably the least intuitive part of the software to figure out since it's not set anywhere, but once you got it, you can install tons of models and batch convert multiple versions and singers on the same file in minutes. It's really convenient. The caveat to this is that if you want a slightly different sound, speed, or expression across all the files you generate, you're going to need a completely different file. Let me show you what I mean. I'm going to take the next sentence I say and run it through three different vocal models, and they're going to sound almost exactly the same. Hi, my name is Adrian, and I'm talking to you through Vocal AI. Hi, my name is Adrian and I'm talking to you through Vocal AI. Hi, my name is Adrian and I'm talking to you through Vocal AI. Hi, my name is Adrian and I'm talking to you through Vocal AI. If you have a recording and you want the exact expression already present in the acapella you convert, it's fantastic. If you want to hear, for example, Tattoo's interpretation of a song, it's not going to work too well or be very convincing, and that's because of the way this audio conversion works. For example, I've had the exact same problem with Sobit's SVC, and this is what I've had to do. Find my songs, get ready to re-record my own acapellas, sing in the exact style, range, and accent of the artist I want to hear on the track. It is absolutely no small feat, but when you hear the result, it's definitely not a waste of your time. I don't have the original recordings of my voice from my singles since they were converted in real time, but I'll show you just how sensitive these AI models are, so much that you basically have to impersonate the artist you want to hear for good results, like I did in, let's see, my original single, Memory. And it sounds like this. For shiggles, let's find one of my acapellas from the song, which was recorded in real time into the models of Yulia and Yena. And we'll run these recordings back through replay, and I'll show you just how much they stay true to the input of the singers. Here's the example.
Целуй на целуй, прости, show me love. And we're gonna run it now as Yulia and Lena, and then Ali Hillis from Final Fantasy XIII. Spinning on your tongue, you push me in your fear of no zombies on your side. Just tied up inside your bedroom. In another life, you know I'll never forget you. Твой не забывай, я обнимаю теперь подушку. Ты можешь по бирже. Нас сняли в клипе в две массы там. Целой на целой, прости, что мне лав. Spinning all your time, you push it, me near fear of no zombies on your side. Just tied up in such a bedroom. In another life, you know I'll never forget you. Find this up and fly. Я обнимаю теперь подушку. Я можу спабирь я. Нас сняли в клипе в две массы там. Целой на целой, прости, что мне лав. Notice how close the Hillis model sounds, even though she doesn't speak Russian in any of the data, to the accent of Yulia and Vienna. It's almost the same. If you go to waits.gg where I found these models and run them through the TTS or text-to-speech under the Create tab, they sound nothing like that, or really the speaker in general, because those models are based on the accents and speech cadences of still other speakers. So, before you grab an acapella online to convert in a few seconds for a cover and call it good, remember, if you want to sound authentic, it's all about the accent and cadence going into Replay's RBC. If you don't record a new acapella that's say like Elvis impersonator type good, you're only changing the tone or more technically the timbre of the voice. If we want to hear, for example, Ali Hillis sing the single I just showed you, we'll have to sing it like Ali Hillis. And I've been a come clean with you right now, I don't even know how that would sound, but it's still super cool to think about. Now, there are some other cool features of Replay like the ability to automatically share your creations, easy install models right inside the box, stand separation if you don't happen to have an acapella, and of course the ability to remix the recording you just did. I think those are all self-explanatory and not quite as exciting to me as the rest of the features, bugs, or frequently asked questions you might be interested in, so I'll go straight into those from here. First, it is not completely obvious how to save your songs or minimize menus when you preview a song. These are minor issues with the way the user interface is organized, and I think it's pretty easy to get past. Your completed songs will show up in the left side panel where you can click the three dots, rename them, download them to a separate folder, and then safely delete them from the queue side since they automatically save inside of Replay's install folder. If you don't do this, it's totally fine. The only downside is they take up extra space. I haven't been able to find a way to change that yet, but I'm hoping they give an option to set default conversion folder and naming conventions. For now, I just keep a space on the other drive for acapellas and I haven't had a problem. Second, you might get some errors on your jobs and they won't disappear unless you restart the server using one of the drop down menus. It's not hard to find, the menus are easy to read. Restart the server is sometimes good for when you get an invalid PTH error and so on. After restarting it, the next conversion you run will start with a one time setup which sometimes will push a stubborn conversion to go through. Third, be aware that some models don't work with Replay, like some SVC models that have multiple speakers, or the large G models that you grab out of Colab. If you're using Colab, especially if you're using the um, original RBC release Colab, you're going to have to download the file out of ways. I've been dealing with this myself, as my first attempt with Vocal AIs was with Sovitz SVC, and that model does not play nice with Replay at all. Does not work, do not waste your time. Finally, I think this is a massive improvement over what I was doing before with Sovitz in the sense I can just record my vocals, toss them into Replay, and literally whoever I want will sing them. Presto, acapella is ready to go into my music projects. I don't have to manually switch between speakers, wait for the real-time conversion to start, or worry about having to do 14 takes because I can't hear if it's working properly while I'm recording. This cuts out a lot of the hassle, especially if your vocal AI needs don't involve converting in real-time for voice chatter speaking live. So, for a music producer like me, a scriptwriter or someone doing skits, Replay is perfectly suited to that. Now, before I keep talking about how cool this is, let me give a huge thanks to everyone who has subscribed, liked, commented, and enjoyed my work the past few months. I'm expecting to do more music with vocal AI in the future, and maybe even skits. And huge props to those who have put time and effort to make these models so we can all enjoy them. J-Pop Karaoke, you in particular made an exquisite Yulia model from my data set, which saved me days of work, and I can't thank you enough. Up next, I plan to make a few models of my own, and now that I've freed about 30 gigabytes off of my computer from the checkpoints of my older SBC models, I want to throw out there that I routinely make high-quality dataset-ready files all day long as an audio engineer, and I do have Colab Pro. If you'd like to request me to help process files, make a dataset for you, or a model, let me know. I can be reached on Twitter and Discord for commissions tailored to your needs. 
If you want to hear more of the work I have so far, you can check out my channel for some videos, which I will link below. And with that, I just want to say it's been great hearing from you all, enjoying music and coming together as a community. If you have any questions or need help with your software, you can leave a comment here or find me on social. I'll leave some more links for you on that. And if you have requests or you want to help me make more music, definitely reach out. I have a long list and I'm thinking of setting up a Discord specifically for requests. Don't be shy and let me know what's up. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. I'll see you later. This video and all of my other content is made possible by a long list of staunch supporters for whom I'm extremely thankful. Given the nature of covers and remixes, my videos are subject to takedown at any given time if I don't have a cover license or a mechanical license, which I do have in some cases and do pay for. Each new cover song typically runs me about $12 a year, each mechanical license costs about $200. So if you want to help make sure that videos like Memory and my English version of Niverni Boise stay online, you can donate on my Ko-fi or my Patreon. My Patreon will be charged once monthly despite being per project. Since it's an old account and the settings are kind of screwy, I'm part of that. Anyways, thank you guys so much and I'll see you next time.